Welcome back to another Star Trek The Next Generation Reaction. Today, we're on episode 12. Can you believe it? 12 episodes. Uh, season 2. I mean, it feels like... Oh, did you already start without me? We diverted from our scheduled course when a passing Klingon cruiser what? reported discovering pieces of a strange vessel. Romulan to Klingon, back to back? Hell yeah. All reliable. Surface temperature minus 291 degrees Celsius. Winds up to 312 meters per second. <sighs> Not exactly a vacation planet, huh? Mm -mm. Not unless you like ammonia tornadoes. What's all this woke garbage? Give me, uh, give me Fahrenheit and miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> the sooner we find out what the Klingons think they saw, the sooner we can get the hell out of here. Sounds good to me. <sighs> Nasty. <laughs> I enjoyed the inclusion of Jordy a lot more. Um, yep. he, he was kind of in the background for, for the beginning of the season. That's true, yeah. Oh, oh what? My God, is it Lassa? We've got ourselves a little puzzle, number one, sir. I guess we have. Nope, it's NASA. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, there's a hard hard buy-in already for me. You know, seeing NASA, yeah. I'll try. A... I'll try. I mean, it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. I mean, yeah, it's just I don't know. Whenever it ties back to, oh, we're going to. This time period, this is filmed Earth. It's like, uh, you know, I feel like I feel like they've done pretty good so far not to do that this season, at least. It's also be that was also better than you know the Omega Glory walking in with an American flag <laughs> at the end of the episode. So we'll see. Battle Royale, where are we dropping, boys? <laughs> no, no Earth ship of that time could have traveled out this far. Nevertheless, that is what our tests indicate. Any indication of what destroyed it, Data? That is even more significant than the object itself, Counselor. On several of its surfaces, from Who? Almost as if they were hit by a weapon from our time. Curious, uh, I'm curious. Uh. Captain. There's that creative consultant again. Give me a moment, gents. We're dealing with an extremely narrow access point. Phaser's on. It's done. Ooh, Cliff Bowl. Conspiracy director. Oh, okay. Commander. What is that? What the? Oh, is this going to be a trippy episode? Oh, hell yeah. A door? I think Worf has ever seen a revolving door. Structure must be here, yet we cannot see it. Probably not. None of them probably have. Any information about the structure? Yes, sir. There's an antique revolving door. It could be an entrance. Revolving door. Well, you know, everyone in Starfleet is like a, a master human historian. Mm -hmm. But in person. In person. Yeah, no, in, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you meant. Oh, my. Oh, here we go. Casino. You think they're about to talk down to us about betting, even though they played poker in the beginning of Measure of a Man? <laughs> oh, shit, here we go. Enterprise to away team, come in. We're receiving no signal at all from them, sir. Transporter room, lock onto the landing party, beam them up. We've got nothing to lock on to, sir. Oh, yeah, that's why it's called the Royale. All right. Now, how does this explain the NASA thing? When they went through that antique doorway, the signal just disappeared, sir. We're here, there's no danger. We'll look around and leave. Of course, Riker wants to stay. It's a little bit triggering for me because I just had a recent trip to the casino where I lost money. <laughs> I've had very little casino experiences, but each one I've had, I've done nothing but lose money immediately. I'm like, well, I'm done. <laughs> Your first bet, lose five dollars. That's enough. Yep. We've been expecting you. A trio of foreign gentlemen. Yes, we're from the United Federation of Planets. Of course you are. Welcome to the Hotel Royale. I love TV actors because everyone looks so vaguely familiar that you've probably seen them in, mm -hmm. very minimally in other shows. This is my life I'm talking about here. Now, did Rita call or not? No. And for your own good, you better quit thinking about Rita. Kid's just asking for trouble. Rita's too much for him to handle, and Mickey D's going to plant his face in the pavement. He's got no name on the name tag. Just Royale. And some complimentary casino chips. where they get you what is this place how did it be like you get here well this is the royale of course and my personal life is really none of your business thank you <laughs> <laughs> this planet what do you call it earth what do you call it oh boy we call it data eight <laughs> that guy was pretty great for just like playing it oh straight. yeah this guy i mean you know tv actors you know what i mean like probably get the pages like 
yesterday. You got to memorize it and be ready and be fully bought into this role by the time it's time to shoot. And that guy probably, one take, nailed it. I totally bought that guy is who he is. Commander. Yes, dear. None of these people are emitting life signs. You mean they're not alive? Then what are they? Love this score here. Yeah. Been such a lack of score lately. I'm glad we get something. These beings, are they machines? I just love the amount of red flags, but they're still just staying in here. They do exist, but they do not register as either man or machine. Are they sure it's the Royale and not the Overlook? <laughs> Time to get out of business. Dale Demodome. <laughs> what sort of business do you suppose he is getting down to? Another great example. Like, I don't know why this is happening, and I'm glad we haven't been queued up to, to know what's happening, yeah. but I'm enjoying it. Was it revealed to us yeah. in the beginning before anyone else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's unlike Commander Riker not to follow procedure. I don't feel he's in any danger. She can apparently sense him from inside this casino, so. But, uh, just, but that's been established, though, right? That her and Riker have, like, a special, you know. They're, like, connected. Yeah. yeah. He wants you to cut the cards. Ah, huh. is this poker? No, no, blackjack. Blackjack. Nice. Access it. Blackjack is how I lost my money. Don't do it, Data! <laughs> Picture cards are worth 10. Aces, 1 or 11. All other cards face value. Whoa! I appreciate the exposition there because I know nothing about these games. Do I hit Texas or do I stand? If you gotta win, you gotta hit. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. Damn! Shoot! Hit me. <laughs> 21 and a winner. Yes, sirree. Oh, come on. Hit me. How'd you? <laughs> Shut my mouth. Bros counting cards. Yeah. While there is a certain amount of enjoyment involved, I am mainly conducting research and save it. We're getting out of here. Understood, sir. I lost all my chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch chips. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, the hat. Sorry, sir. Doesn't get to keep the hat, the beard, his other hat. Shame. I feel like Worf would bet all in, just on every hand. All in. Yeah. No, sir. You sir, <laughs> you, haven't at, you haven't looked at your cards yet. All in. There's no such thing as half measures. All in. No, you don't. <laughs> and then he loses. Mm, I see. Respect. <laughs> I'm comparing the molecular integrity of that bubble against our phasers. It's penetration possible. I don't know just yet. It may be an option. Meanwhile, these three are just left with this boring staring at the computer screen. Oh, there's a bubble. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they don't get to go to the fun <laughs> casino. Oh, penetrate the bubble. Okay. Oh, shit. Guys, try just exiting the door when you walk through. Oh, boy. Let's try that again. I'm guessing what they're trying to imply is that it's just like a, yeah, like it's you, the same thing. Mm -hmm. But the way they're showing it doesn't really yeah, it show does, it, it doesn't that really, great. Yeah, and you can obviously tell what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're expected to think like, oh, they're just leaving. But no, they could have just done like a mirror switch of the camera. Yeah, or yeah. Excuse me. You know, they say practical, you know, and easy is the best, but I feel like there's needs to a little camera trickery to make the effect like they're not leaving because yeah. it's so simple that they're just going around the fucking door. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did you know? Yeah, how did you look know the look there? It's a good deal of structural integrity, Worf. Permission to use phasers, sir. Granted. Unless you're just guessing. Or unless nothing but, I don't think any, anything budged there, maybe. Ooh, turned it up. Ooh, nice. Sir, I can find no other exits. I believe we are trapped here. I like you. I don't want to see you get hurt, especially over something. Don't call her that. You'll see. You'll see how tough Mickey D is. I, I just can't stop envisioning like this guy owns a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> this Ronald McDonald is, like, is, is the, the boss of this whole thing. If you have a complaint about the service you've received during your stay here, you can always take it up with the manager. Fine. I'd like to see him immediately. I'm afraid the manager is very busy. 
was going to say, I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2, and you can just stumble on these NPC conversations that don't really affect many things, but they're having a full-on conversation. They kind of reminded me of that. Like, is that going to come into play later? Probably, maybe, but... It'd be kind of cool if it just didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's just... There we go, David. Oh, because the door didn't automatically open for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there's one thing, as much as they know about history, they'll never understand. It's different types of doors. Yeah. I guess, to be fair, Worf wouldn't be a human historian, I guess. Data knew the pro But he did his computer, I don't know. Riker knows how to knock. Worf knows how a door handle works. Now, do you think any of these questions were in their head when they were making this? Or like, I just fucking knocked on the door. Yeah, no, they just, don't care. Just, just fucking open the door. Are you getting any lights on? None, sir. Oh, shit. Is that Rita? Definitely human. Male. Looks like the poor devil died in his sleep. How can you tell from... It's a skeleton. What a terrible way to die. He has been dead for 283 years, sir. I like that little moment from Worf when he's like, died in his sleep, and Worf was like, sounds like a terrible way to die. Because, you know, he's a Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> 52 stars, sir. Places it between 2033 and 2079 AD. Oh, wait, did you say 53 stars? Or 50, doesn't matter, but... More than 50. Colonel S. Richie. Rest in peace, Colonel. Ah, uh, so he's, he stumbled upon, upon this place and died here. But, like, in an Earth spaceship? Like, how did it get out there? Black hole? I guess so. Books, novel. Hotel Royale. Summarize, please. Nice. <laughs> Our exploratory shuttle was contaminated by an alien life form, which infected and killed all personnel except myself. Elf? Precisely as described in the novel I found in my room. And for the last 38 years, I have survived here. My gosh. But the alien contaminators created this place for me out of some sense of guilt. Presuming that the novel we had on board the shuttle about the Hotel Royale was in fact a guide to our preferred lifestyle and social habits. Obviously they thought this was the world to which I came. I hold no malice toward my benefactors. They could not possibly know the hell that they have put me through. For it was such a badly written book. <laughs> I shall welcome death when it comes. So I wonder, like, is the story just play out over and over again? Because, like, if he was there that long... Yeah, that long, yeah. We know why all that is there. Why can't you get out? That too. Well, that's a nice twist how it's, it's not just, you know, oh, it's 80s Earth. Yes? <laughs> there is a female voice asking if we want room service. <laughs> I believe she is asking if we want the room cleaned. Tell her no. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never would have pictured Worf picking up a, a classic telephone. Ah, the classic talk to the NPC part of the mission. <laughs> what information can we get? So they're basically in an interactive video game, pretty much. If the cause of the difficulties is in the novel, we may find the solution within its pages. Ah. It was a dark and stormy night. <sighs> <laughs> I love how it's not even a good novel, it's a bad novel. Yeah. That's hilarious. I love how he judges it instantly, <laughs> the first sentence. It was a dark and stormy night. Ugh. Excuse me, sir. Might I inquire? Where are you from? Texas. Double Texas. I've almost lost it all. What am I going to do? There, there, there. That was weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it was like Data trying to like break through her. Like, is her character always designed to lose? Is that the... And she was trying to break through to her? Mickey D thinks he can treat people any way he wants. Well, that's all over now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. When I was a kid, I used to look up to you guys. The suit. I really thought that made you somebody. 
teacher, nobody. She could make something. <laughs> I don't believe this dialogue. Did humans really talk like that? Not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> No woman's worth dying for, killing for, not dying for. Gotta love the cliched, get away with murder right in the middle of the... <laughs> oh, he's the boss, right? Big shot. It's Mickey D. I just wonder if we're gonna see, like, everything reset. The shootout between the bellboy and Mickey D. In the novel, right? How does it end? The hotel gets bought out. The hotel gets bought? By whom? Simply refers to foreign investors. Sale price twelve point five million United States dollars. So they're gonna they gotta dress up as the people who buy it. The likelihood of those totals occurring is not significant. However, okay, okay, can you do it? I believe so, sir. <laughs> they gotta win the money first. <laughs> Eight's a point. Uh, craps. Oh God. <laughs> Commander, these cubes are improperly balanced. Uh oh. I will make another attempt. Oh my, he's crushing him into place. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Seven and winner. Keep going wrong with that. <laughs> Space. Oh, I love when they let him just go crazy. Perhaps I will bet 700,000. No, bet it all. But sir, the sale price of this edifice is 12.5 million. We need some spreading around money data. <laughs> Here you go, Vanessa. A little something for you, too. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Riker. Seven, seven a winner. <laughs> the man has the touch. <laughs> you are the foreign investors. That's right. We just bought this place lock, stock, and barrel. Why is he showing the book? <laughs> yeah. What if he's like, hey, what's that? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> is that a book with the name of our hotel? I'm like, what? <laughs> Welcome back, number one. Very strange experience. Puzzling. I still can't comprehend how Colonel Ritchie's vessel could have traveled out that far. Like Fermat's theorem, it's a puzzle we may never solve. Picard's basically like, eh, don't think about it. <laughs> That's why they brought that up in the beginning, yeah. <laughs> uh... Well, that was fun, I guess. Weird. Definitely weird. Uh, this feels like they were just like, how can we do a casino episode? Oh, I have an idea. And what we got out of that was this episode. It's really odd. And the resolution was kind of, eh. And like, I wish we saw some more cracks in this system. Like, start to break down and like, has this been on a loop for 238 years? I, I would have liked if the, somehow there was some like, because they play the foreign investors, right? That somehow it was predicted years ago, it was theorized that three men from space would come down. Like, almost like a Beyond Belief episode. Is this possible? That this book was written 300 years ago, but it predicted the three of us coming? It's, I don't know, something crazy like that. I don't know. I even know what to say. I, I'm, <laughs> my brain is uh, scrambled. Well, I was terrified by the hook. I thought we were in for a terrible episode, and I tried not to judge it by that. Um, and I'm glad that, you know, based on the hook, that is not at all what I expected the episode to be. I mean, from finding a broken piece of a NASA ship to it being a hotel casino simulation created by an alien race that we never get to see. Uh, I'm not necessarily disappointed or anything we didn't get to see them, but I mean, yeah, look, it, I, it's probably the most unique episode so far or most like out there episode mm -hmm. uh i do know that i've seen some comments some people don't like when they do you know earth like earth type stuff like some people are like i want to watch star trek i want to watch a, a futuristic you know space sci-fi show don't show me something i can see in any other show and i get that to an extent i think it just all depends on do they do it well or do they not and i think here they mostly did it well um it felt a little thin towards the end like how much screen time they put into that rich guy and the woman for it to ultimately not really lead to anything like we didn't need that that much i liked the first scene with data and them when he's wearing the hat and playing blackjack that yeah, was all yeah. great character stuff but then they just kept going to them and they just didn't have much to offer um 
Especially since they didn't like directly influence the ending or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always get a little worried when I see, uh oh, modern Earth, oh no. Or is it something where they're going to yell down at us about like, hey, you need to do this. But I think it also opens up a possibility of seeing our characters interact with the modern world. Like seeing how Data would interact playing uh, Blackjack or whatever. Or Worf interacting. I, I wish we got more Worf, you know, interacting with people in this. And the way he handles... Well, we did. You know, him answering the phone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, like... Those scenes are fun, as long as the entire episode isn't that. As long as there's a cohesive enough and interesting storyline behind those fun scenes. I think it does and can work. But when you're relying just purely on gags, or worse, it's like an okay story and there's no gags, where it's like, okay, we're obviously dealing with people from the future, we need to have a little something. It's that perfect, trying to find that perfect mix, and it's tough to do. I feel like this, this one did an okay job at that. And also not doing it too much in terms of episodes that, you know, set in a time or, or a place that we're familiar with, right? Like, they're, they're not doing it all the time or doing it too much, in my opinion. So if it's just once in a while, whether it's the holodeck or, you know, this wasn't even a holodeck, came across a unique circumstance. Yeah, I felt like, okay, I, almost as, as if they're aware, we can't use the holodeck every time. What else do we got? You know, we got to think of something else. And it's like, oh, what well, an alien species... Oh, let's say in 2030 there was a NASA ship and a guy was lost. It's like, let's do that, because as much as I love the holodeck, I'm pretty sure even at this point they were like, maybe let's not use it every time. We need to you know, have an Earth-like setting. And I, and I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we'll jump into it fully in our full discussion of the episode. If that's available, it'll be here on screen for you to click. If it's not yet, make sure to subscribe so you can check out all of our Star Trek videos, including the discussion of this one as soon as we post it.